Saban had said after the Louisiana Monroe game that he thought losing was embedded in those players a little bit more deeper than he expected. When you came here nine years ago, was there a little bit of that, or and and how did you overcome that type of thing? No, you know, I, when I when I when I went to Ole Miss, you know, I just took the philosophy that hey, we're going to do whatever we can to to get our philosophy over in a positive manner as quick as we possibly could. And same thing here. You know, you can't look back. You can't dwell on anything. I think if you do that, it lingers. And, uh, you know, that, that, that's kind of the, how I feel about, you know, in the philosophy that, that we do. You know, you go in, you take over, and you go. I, 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 didn't, I didn't hear that statement. But, uh, you know, sometimes you have reasons for, for saying things like that. And, and, you know, to try to make a point, there could be some validity to it. But, again, uh, you know, the... I always, you know, go into a situation where you just look at it, you do the best you can, and you never look back. Well, the strength of, of Alabama's team probably would be their receivers. They've got a lot of good ones that catch the ball, uh, made a lot of plays, made a lot of big plays. And, Oh, you don't have to look very far back in our season where we didn't we didn't defend the the pass very well, you know whether it was coaching or whether it was you know how we played the ball or or how how Georgia played. Sometimes uh, if you play well enough and throw it in the right spot, as LSU did on the last play of their game against us, you know I wouldn't take anything back from what we called or the coverage we had. It was just a perfect throw. Sometimes you know those fall into place, but we. Uh, you know, we, I, you, you don't know what's going to happen in this game, what they're going to do on offense, what we're going to do. You know, both of us always change a few things. You always go into a game, look at the other people's personnel, and you try to attack that. That's what you do in, in football. You take your strengths and go after weaknesses, and if you can find any of them, then uh, you, you try to exploit them. And uh, I'm sure that's what they'll do, and that's what we'll do. Can you talk a little bit about Brandon Cox and the season he's had? You know, that slow start that you kind of got off the Yeah, you know, Brandon's. He, he, he's persevered. He's had a tough uh, season last year in terms of not being very healthy. This year he got off to a very slow start, trying to do a lot. And Again, we, that, that's as much as our fault as his because we asked him to do some things probably we shouldn't have done. But he's, uh, he's a good quarterback. He understands our offense. He's made some big-time plays since he's been here. He's made some uh, great comebacks for us. Heck, he's He's had four or five drives at the end of the game this year that were picture, picture perfect. I mean, he's, he's got experience. He understands how to prepare for a game like this one coming up. He's played in this game before, and uh, he, uh, uh, he, he likes this game in, in terms of knowing that, that uh, you know, the, the meaning of it for everybody involved. So uh, I like a quarterback like Brandon going into this game. You know, he doesn't get rattled, doesn't get shook. He can take a, take a lick and he can get back up and make a big play the next place. So uh, it's, I'm looking forward to him playing in this game. Tommy, the 12.30 <clears throat> schedule kickoff and push back to 7. Uh, does it really make a difference, just other than it's a longer day for the players to lay around and think about it? Would you prefer to play earlier? Or is, it doesn't matter if this particular game as long as it gets played. Well, this time of year, you know, you're going to run in a little bit more difficult weather in terms of players being able to execute, especially on offense. And uh, just looking at extended forecasts, it looks like somewhere in the 40s and possibly rain. Mm -hmm. And if you played in the daytime, it probably would be a little bit warmer. But, you know, that, this is a game where it doesn't make any difference. You know, you, you, you want people throughout the country to be able to see it. A little bit disappointed that, uh, uh, you know, we didn't play it last week. But, you know, that's fine. You, you know, we didn't, didn't play it. And, and uh, we're playing it now the, the weekend of, of Thanksgiving. I think it, uh, it'll be interesting to see how the students handle it from both sides, you know, going to the games or not going to the games, the fans, you know, Thanksgiving, all those things. But, you know, the, the time of the day doesn't, doesn't really make a lot of difference. It's just, uh, you know, for, for the players and coaches, we're used to it. We've, we played a lot of night games this year. I don't, I don't think we played over two or three day games. And so we're, we're pretty used to playing at night. How much insight do you get from Mus Champ? First time going to save like that. How much does he bring to you guys to just know what's been I, I, There's probably a little bit of carryover in terms of a, a lot of, you know, if you, if you coach with coaching against somebody that you might have coached on a team with before, even an assistant coach, there's a little bit of carryover. But you go into a game like this, you know, there's going to be changes. Uh, again, there's different matchups. And again, it, there, there's no one game is coached the same. You go into a game and look at your strengths and just 
try to get the matchups the way you want it. And of course, we've sat down and talked to, to Will about you know, some things that you know, they possibly did or how they did it down at uh, LSU when he was there. But uh, of course, uh, Nick knows uh, Will very well. So there's, there's probably going to be a pretty good trade off there in terms of knowing each other. Tommy, you, it's an odd week that you don't have class. So you don't have the distraction of, of students all around here going to. Is that a good thing, a bad thing? Because it's a little different routine than normal game. It's different, and what we're we're trying to do is is not do too much with the players. You can keep them up here too long. You can you can put them in meetings too long. You can bore them to death, or you can overcoach. And the one thing that you don't want to do as a coaching staff is get in and think on Wednesday or Thursday of this week after watching film for about ten days that you know this might work. You know we, we're not going to put anything in after what we did. Uh, uh, to, uh, actually, what what we came up with uh, uh, over the weekend. We're just we're not going to do it. I, I'm a believer that uh, sometimes you can outcoach yourself, and so we've got our game plan pretty much in, intact after after last Thursday. We hadn't implemented it all yet, but we're not going to make any changes uh, after the weekend in terms of what we're going to do this week. I, players win the games, especially games like this. You're going to get effort out of both sides. You want to just get them out there and get them in a situation where they feel comfortable and knowing what they're doing and let them play and see what happens. What about time on your players' hands? Well, you, you know, that kind of it's a difficult situation where you give them too much free time, too. You, you don't know what they're doing, where they're at, and, and uh, you want to make sure that they're getting plenty of rest. So we, uh, we're, we're letting them sleep late. You know, we're not practicing until the middle of the day. We're not over meeting them in the morning. We're having more meetings in the afternoon. We are having some academic meetings with, with about uh, uh, 30, 40 percent of our players that have tests next week coming back. So we want to make sure that. Uh, uh, we have tutors and people helping with them, make sure they're they're uh, doing some stuff like that this week. So it's not just all all football. We want to make sure that their time is taken up, but we also want to give them a little bit of freedom. This is Thanksgiving and it's holiday week, and you don't want to make it punishment for them to be. It's like a bowl game. If you practice 50 times for a bowl game, you know next year they might not want to get back. And so uh, <laughs> so we we try to make it as fun as we possibly can. I think all players mentioned uh, pretty intense practice today. Was that uh, something you saw too? The what? You mentioned the practice today was pretty intense. Was yeah, something? yeah, it was a good practice. Day. We went full pads, had a lot of contact. Last week we only went in uh, what we call shell shoulder pads and shorts, and and you do as much contact basically. But we we wanted to make sure that we they un they understood that that's what we normally do. Try to get as much routine as we possibly can. Same thing that we've been doing, and again have a little bit more contact. You don't want to be off. Uh, for two weeks and not, not have contact, not tackle at all, not have full speed uh, hitting. We don't bring people to the ground, but you can do a lot of things with full pads on that simulate what you're doing. He did practice, ran well. He's a lot better than he was uh, last Thursday. He gets better every day and we we'll just have to wait and see. He, he, but he did practice. Same with Courtney and uh, Courtney practiced. Uh, they all practice. Every practice. Uh, Craig Stevens practiced, ran well. So did uh, Zach Clayton. He had a, he's had an ankle sprain. So it, you know, they're not. In the past, we've had four or five people in the training room. And today, they were all out on the field. So we had to find another field to practice on. We had so many guys out there. <laughs> Do you think it helps you guys that they're aware that basically when things don't go well on offense, it's because they didn't execute what you do very well? Those guys were talking it wasn't. They, just, they don't expect you to come out on the clock wide and all that. They just, you didn't do. One more time. It's, it's very simple, I guess. That we didn't run the ball very well. We didn't do this very well. They were very, they were very sure of themselves. They could bounce back. At the Georgia That's game? Cute. At the Georgia game? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, what you do is you get to film and you kind of you look at what you're doing and what Georgia did. And sometimes uh, the other team has a little bit to do with what, what you were doing, how successful you are or not successful. And then you kind of make changes and look at your – the thing that we do on film is we look at fundamentals and technique, are we doing the right things? And then if you're getting beat at that, then it's time to do a little bit something different, you know, in terms of, like you said, maybe a, another wide receiver or uh, an, another tight end in the game, something to help you uh, improve, give you a little bit more of an edge. But, uh, you know, there's, this time of year, there's not a lot of changes. There's not a lot of things you, that you want to do. If you start changing a lot, then uh, players know that you're abandoning the ship and, and uh, might go the other way on you.